We're now going to add some detail to the intersection edges. In this case, we'll be adding the basic curves to these edges. In order to do this, we'll need to separate these edges from the road edges. The first thing we'll need to do is make all the edges into individual primitives. To do this, we will use the Convert Line node. If we turn on the primitive numbers, we will see that we now have a primitive for every edge. The number of points for each road can also change. To deal with this, we're going to want to know the number of points for each road edge and to delete primitives based on these point counts. We'll now get an attribute wrangle node. And as we are only going to need a single value, we will make it a detail attribute. The attribute will be an integer, and I will call it road1. Attributes value will be set to the number of points. In this case, it will be numpt. I will then duplicate the attribute wrangle node and connect it to the other branches. The attributes will then be renamed to row 2 and row 3. I'll then rename my attribute wrangle nodes. Next, we'll add a blast node in order to start deleting primitives. The first primitive I will delete is actually a primitive related to road 3. To delete this primitive, we'll just add a 0 as the group name. To delete the next primitive, add an expression which is going to be between backticks. We will get a detail attribute. I will then specify the road1 attribute wrangle node. The attribute name is road1 and we will refer and we will reference the default index with a 0. The next primitive will require the sum of road1 and road2's points. I'll press alt e to open the expression editor so that we can have a bit more space. What we then need to do is to add the road1 detail attribute to the road2 detail attribute. Now all the edges for the intersections should be deleted. I can then duplicate the blast node and set delete non-selected to be true. Having isolated the intersection primitives, we will now work on them using a for each primitive loop. This will allow us to iterate over each intersection individually. What I want to do is place points along this curve. 
These points will be pushed to the side along the XZ plane. To do this I'll need to give each point a local transformation. We will also need to prevent the first and last points of the intersection from moving. Creating the local transformation is simple. First we get the normal from the curve and then we get the side direction from taking a cross product of the normal and the vector which is pointing directly upwards. To manipulate the curve we will want an equation that will have a value of 0 or 1 at both ends of the curve and will allow for a smooth transition between those values. Basically we want a curve that will look like this. This is a parabola that will pass through 0, 1 and 1, 1. The equation of this parabola is y equals 2x minus 1 squared. This is the equation we will use to control the weight of our deformations. I will start by getting a resample node. As I do not want my curve length to change and I want even divisions, I will uncheck maximum segment lengths and use maximum segments instead. Next I will add a polyframe node. I will then set the tangent to be the normal. We now have our normals and next we will add an attribute rankle node. Next we will add our up vector attribute. We will start by typing in v to specify that it is a vector, then at and then the name which will be up and then we will set it to 0, 1, 0. We can see this vector by adding a visualize node. Once you've added the node, go to the visualization tab, set the type to marker Set the style to vector and type up as the attribute name. The right attribute is also a vector and we will set it using the cross function. We will take the cross product of the normal and of the up vector. And we will visualize it using the same method as the up vector. I now have my right vector, but I prefer the vectors to face away from the intersection. To do this, I will swap the up vector and the normal in the cross product function. Now I will start to use my parabola equation. The x values in the equation will come from a gradient that we will add to the intersection. The gradient will be a float value. To get a gradient, we want to divide the point number by the number of points. First, we will want the point number, which we will cast as a float. You want to divide that by the number of points, which is also to be cast as a float. Because the point numbers start at 0, we will also have to subtract 1 from the number of points. I will then check my geometry spreadsheet to make sure that my values go from 0 to 1. In this case, they do not. 
This is because I forgot to place the minus 1 in parentheses. Now my values are correct and go from 0 to 1. We will now use our parabola equation storing the result in our color attribute. We will have the base equation which we will have to raise to the power of 2. To do this we will use the power function. The first value will contain our main equation and the second will be 2. Then it will be 2 times our gradient minus 1. We can see that we now have a color gradient on our curve. If you go to the geometry spreadsheet you'll see that our gradient goes from 1 to 0 to 1. This is actually the opposite of what we need. So to invert our equation we shall subtract it from 1. And now we should have the correct values. Finally we want to move our points, so we want to modify the point position attribute. We want the modification to be relative to its current position, so we start with the current value. We want to move the point with the direction of the right vector. To do this we add the right vector to the point position. To control the strength of the movement we multiply the right vector by the color. Then to increase the effect of this I am going to multiply the color by a value. We will need to control the detail and the curvature for each of the intersections separately. To do this I am going to place an attribute wrangle node before the start of the for loop. We are going to add two different attributes to this wrangle node. The first one will be for the curve deformation and I will call this one curve dist. The second one will control the refine node and I will call it refinement. We want our curve distance to be a float and we want our refinement to be an integer. We will then use the if conditional to set a separate value on each primitive. If the primitive number, we will take the first primitive which is 0 and we will check for equality on it. We will then want to create a slider for our curve dist and for our refinement attributes. I will then cut and paste the if statement twice and renumber the sliders and if statements properly. After pressing the button to create the parameters, I now have controls for each of my intersections. First I will set up the resample node. In the segments I will get the primitive attribute. As we are not referring to a specific node, the first value will be 0. As the for loop is going through all the primitives individually, we can use 0 for the primitive number. We will then want the refinement attribute, and as there is only one value, the index will be 0. I'll then just check to make sure everything is working correctly. Now we will want to control the deformation. The attributes are currently on the primitives and we need them to work on the points. To do this we will use an attribute promote node. We will set the origin class to primitive and the new class to point. In the original name we will choose the attributes we want to change. 
what I notice over here is I've made a typo on my curve distance and I have two parameters listed for it. So I'll go to where they're declared and I'll just correct the name. I can now replace this arbitrary number with the curve distance attribute. I will then test to see that this is now working correctly. We can now use a merge node to rejoin our road ends and our intersections. Next, we will reconnect the intersections by using a fuse node. And to recreate our geometry, we will use a polyfill node. And as you'll see, nothing happens. And the reason nothing happens is because the polyfill node is looking for quads and we have an uneven amount of points. In order to fix this, we'll change the refinement on one of the intersections. You can also fix this by changing the full mode. We are now going to clean up the network. We'll get an attribute delete node and connect it directly after the for loop. If I look at my primitive attributes, I'll see that we have a rest length attribute. We do not need this. It is generated by the convert line node. I will go to that node and uncheck the option. I also see that I've converted my refinement attribute to a point attribute. This is corrected by deleting the value from the attribute promote node. I will now delete all the primitive attributes and remove all the point attributes except position. To correct the normals on the intersection, I will use the reverse patches option in the polyfill node. Now to update the HDA interface, we will open up the Type Properties menu. We are going to add new folders. The first is going to be for my intersection properties. The second will be for the geometry. I will then select my attribute wrangle node from before the for loop, and I will drag and drop all the sliders onto the intersection panel. I make use of some separators to keep the panel neat. I'll apply that and now I should be able to control all those parameters from my interface. The defaults for the range and the distance need to be set. The distance should allow for negative values. The range should start at 1 and should not drop below that value. I then clean up my default values in the channels and I check to see that all the sliders are working correctly. Next I add the full mode to the geometry section. I also add the reverse patches.
and that will be my interface menu for now. I then go and test all of those and one of the things I'll see is that I forgot to set my surface offset to zero. We'll, in the next video, we'll fix a bug with the system and we will set it up to take an arbitrary amount of roads.